I asked uh, our sister Olivia Tonu to have uh, alerted her to have ministered, but because of the time, uh, I don't think Olivia uh, reserve your ministration because time is not on our side. I thank Pastor Apostle. And then they are gone, presiding at that for today. <laughs> and indeed, I cannot proceed today without letting you know what happened here at the first service. You know, Pastor gave an eloquent evidence of the stewardship of uh, Dafusu and Perdu. <laughs> and then today, too, is Pencil's Day. And so I, I have redacted, that is reduced, perhaps even have to put aside what really I plan to speak on, but God is God. I was whispering to the Agon presiding elder. Uh, elder, hey, I'm sure I met Trump at home. I said, no, but... As pastor was preaching, I realized that God never makes mistakes. I have really labored. When I'm called upon to preach, particularly on the platform of PRWC, I don't take it for granted at all. I labored, I labored. So one point in time, I was asking God, if you knew this is the message that you want for the church, why did you want lead me to toil all around and around and around like that? But God is a God of surprises. He did not say amen. amen. And so today being Pencil's Day, and then today being a Remembrance Day where we are remembering our, our gone, indeed, let me quote uh, Mama Eunice Quartin's words, in the fatigue presiding elder. Can you give a wave to him? Can you give a wave to him, please? Can you give a wave to him? And so, this morning, all that I'm going to do, in line with what we shall later be seeing on Pencil's Day, what the church has been doing, you need to know where is the church coming from? To the extent that we are doing all these things, to know where you are and so that you can contribute to what the church is doing. And so, I, my, my, can you beam... Assume my topic is nostalgia. Nostalgia. God's covenant with the Church of Pentecost. When we say something is uh, nostalgic, or we're talking about nostalgia, it's a sentimental longing, you know, for affection of a past period of events. And so now I'm taking you back. When you see all that the church is doing, the name of the church, and I mean, indeed, I am proud of being a member of the Church of Pentecost. You shall later see. And uh, so I would drop all that I prepared. And mind you, I am coming from a prophetic conference that is whole area, uh, prophetic, whole area 2022 uh, prophetic conference. So I am charged really, really charged. Coupled with the fact that on Friday, who were here on Friday? Stand up. Who were here on Friday? Oh, clap for yourself. You saw what God did. And this is what we want to see. You may sit down. And so the chairman of the church one time said to us, well, one of his flyers, if the church is reduced, no, let me, I am just paraphrasing this. Our message will not be accepted, will not be believed if our worship is reduced or lacks the demonstration of Pentecostal power. And last Friday we saw them here. Uh uh. Uh uh. Hallelujah. And we thank Pastor Kwesi Asante Anno for availing himself. So, I am not going to preach today. I'm just going to read the covenant of the Church of Pentecost. To, I'm sending you to the back, to, to your roots, where the church came from, 
what happened before the church came on how the church has struggled through and even to name the name church of pentecost i was quite listening to this i like that gentleman so much is it love gate he started at the north fronting gate what's the name of the pastor he said when you go to the church of pentecost they don't know anything from the beginning is the holy spirit and that's the foundation of the church so i will drop all that i want to say and then go to the covenant of the god's first promises of the church of pentecost revealed and i'm quoting i went to the website surprisingly i did not see that apostle is contained here church of pentecost songs compiled for the council meetings retreats conferences etc english and chi addendum god's first covenant of the church of pentecost at pages 146 7 to 149 i'm just going to read it and then sit down or we pray if times permit the spiritual growth i'm quoting the spiritual growth of the church of pentecost and its generals and its spread through the world is a fulfillment of god's covenant made with the founders of the church at its beginning from 1931. At the sixth extraordinary council meeting of the church held in Koforidia in April 1999, the general council decided that the that church members be taught these covenants below for them to know God's fulfillment of his side of the covenants. And what they must do to fulfill their responsibilities in God's plan for the church. End of quote. And then President has fulfilled his responsibilities. Apostle came here as a pastor right from the word go. You can see that he was in line with the Pentecostal party. When you are here, please, a time will come, uh, uh, presiding, I ask you of the name of a sister, Dickness. Where is Sister Miriam? Uh, say where, where, look at where he's sitting. About four years back, this sister will be sitting here time changes when you come here start time is not there for you now and i like her so much if you don't know my wife when you look at that sister that is my wife her beauty her calmness her spirituality so i love her so much now you can't do most of the things that she was doing. Why? Don't come and sit here and sit here thinking that, oh, next year, next time I'll do it. He doesn't have the time. Look at where she's sitting now. For those who don't know, she has given birth twins. The first one was twins. And so two strikes, they've made four. They've made three. Let me continue with the, the prophecies. The, the covenant, God's part, I am quoting, it's not because of how few or many you are in membership. Very prophetic. But according to my divine and eternal purpose and goodwill for my church, end of quote. That is God speaking. And we have a lot of goodwill. Well, things are changing, but you know, wherever you went initially, eh, the moment you mentioned that you are a member of the Church of Pentecost, look at the respect that they give you. And indeed, you move, you rebel, and go out, they will make you a pastor. Rebel, and go to another church, they will make you a pastor. Why? We have a name. 
But the time I finish, and indeed you will understand, we shall show the, the pencils, the activities, and what the church is doing, and sometimes you may not understand, questioning the leadership. Why? Are we a government? We are not a government. We are, we are possessing Ghana. And infusing into Ghana, and in every society of Ghana, divine values and spiritual... Con what? Past Apostle. Macau. <laughs> divine values on what? Well, hallelujah. Look at this. This prophecy came years and it was fulfilled. Quote one that he, God, would raise a nation out of Africa that would be a spearhead and light to the world. He in the second coming of Christ. Jesus our Lord. He's going to prepare a nation. And that's why I love Ghana. I pray for Ghana. And indeed, I've been said all over. In the 70s, wherever you are, any black man in Europe or America is from Ghana. Anywhere. Oh, you are from Ghana. Oh, Kwame Nkrumah. Abedi Pele. Hallelujah. Oh, raise your hand. Say, God bless our homeland, Ghana. Two, that the Gold Coast should tell you that you were not then Ghana. That the Gold Coast has been chosen to fulfill this eternal will and purpose of God. Three, he, God, would accomplish this through a white missionary from Europe who would come to lead the group in future. And the group which through many trials tribulations, temptations, and persecutions would be nurtured, protected, and grow up spiritually, numer numerically, <laughs> would become a great international Pentecostal church which would send out missionaries from the country, the Gold Coast, to all parts of Africa and the world as a whole. Oh, clap, clap, clap. In the 1930s, that's a prophecy. Abama and I, mem. Abama and I, mem. We are sending a missionary here. I did my first master's in South Africa and we went to Rwanda as part of the program to witness the, the proceedings of the International Criminal Tribunal in Kigali. And then I went somewhere and I see the Church of Pentecost in a rural place. I said, ah, my heart. Oh, this is what my ties is making. I was happy. Sending people, paying our CDs, and then changing them into dollars. Very soon, Apostle will be, I will, I will not say demanding, but he'll be asking for dollars. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, from Mammy said, Hey, you know, we shall bring you dollars from people say a poor country. We are not pure. Sending you there. Four, that it will make disciples for the coming Christ while he will call out men according to his own choice from time to time. He will call out men. He called Edafusampadu. When you were being called or chosen, we hear some people, Osadodo, Osama PRWC. God bless you. Because God called him. He has a witness. He's seen something. He heard something. And so no matter the external 
sentiment that will be impressed he pursued on he pressed on and are you seeing it she has concluded everything he's calling out men anthony also such a quiet thing came here as a pastor called out as an apostle there were many who were ahead of him but god knows you god knows everybody he called out mary sitting in a village a virgin going to be married oh hallelujah hallelujah what greetings is this you are favored mary so when you are in a closet, you are doing certain things too, that God is not watching. He's watching you. You are doing it not for man, but you are doing it for who? God. And he does what? He sees them. Hallelujah. I will continue. This is the covenant of the church of Pentecost, the church in which you are now. I will continue. Four. It should be five. It's written four. I'm still quoting that God would ensure that no weapon that is formed against the church prospers and every time that rises against it in judgment shall be condemned and let me tell you there have been weapons that have been raised against the church right from the beginning they wanted to kill it because they saw it from afar to the extent that they nearly deported Machiavelli Nearly. Through Black Bay. Nearly. We are now Ghana, so go home. The president then, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, has to intervene. Let there be a division. Take your part, take your part, and give your part a new name. And that is where Machion chose the Church of Pentecost to separate it from the Apostolic Church of Ghana. Hallelujah! That that persists. That God will meet the church's financial problems in season and out of season. For all other churches to acknowledge that his divine presence, blessings, and glory are of the church. Ask pastor. When the other pastor see him, what, did, what thing did they say? Oh, Church of Pentecost. And very soon, there will be the ministers and whatever are inviting great men of God, calling all of them. How does you, how does the Church of Pentecost, how do you do all these things? They've been coming. He passed, Apostle has worked with the head of Cortez before. Numerous ministers and pastors and church leaders who have been thronging the head of head office to learn how we do our things. It's not by, non, by knowledge. Now we are sitting in a condition. Initially, it was not a popular church. Krasi for sorry. A here for sorry. A yari for sorry. Rise up. Rise up. And then lift your hands and bless God. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the, God, of the living God. That he has called us from obscurity. Oh, into his presence. And that's where we are now. A church that is on it. And glorified. In the affairs of men. God bless you, Heavenly Father. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. You know what you have done. You may resume your seat. 
Thank you so much. Seven, that he would pour abundant spiritual gifts on both men and women. Is it true or true? It's true. I have to rush. That God from time to time will prune and purge his church of all parasites, pests, personality cults, false doctrines, social and religious evils from the church to make her holy and radiant to portray his divine presence. Is it true or true? I'm familiar with prophets and uh, prayer center leaders. I did my sixth form education uh, in Ghana National College. That was a time that Edunfa was not a name that you, you should mention <laughs> in Church of Pentecost. I quite remember in some areas when you say that you have gone there, <laughs> you may be suspended. But the, the woman, Auntie Grace, stood on her ground. But because of her humility and everything, he came to be accepted. And so later on, when you go there, presented by Apostle Days, presented by Apostle Days and wife, donated by Apostle Days and wife. And what was the fear? The fear was that the prayer centers and the prayer centers, they would build a personality call. So we need to be very careful in fulfillment of the divine covenant. And so many have gone. Many have left. They cannot withstand. We don't want prayer leaders who do this. Not in the church of Pentecost. Because that's not what God told us. You need to be humble. Knowing where you come from. In the manger. The king. Your so-called king. But was hanged on the cross as a criminal. Eight, that God will from time to time, I think I've read this. That is God's covenant. And why did Ghana choose from this continent, Ghana, this black continent, Ghana, I believe you have been told because of the, the social media. Africa has a place in God's divine purposes. Oh, I did not hear Amen. Because when Jesus was carrying the cross, he was tired and he almost died in the city. And he took somebody to help him carry the cross beyond because the Bible has said that he need to die. He need to be crucified outside the city. Could you have imagined what would have happened if Jesus had died in the city? The whole of God's plans has been put into disarray. Because the prophets have said it. He needs to die outside the city. Who helped him? A man from Africa. And so when the days are coming to an end, God will use people from this continent. God shall remember us. Yes, we are poor. Poor in quotes. Our leaders are something else. But God will remember us. Mind you, Israel went to slavery for how many years? 430 years. And God remembered them. So God shall remember us. And you have taken note, all now present great evangelists and tele-evangelists, they are all black men. Heralding the second coming of Christ. Because it has been prophesied. I will remember you. For what you have done. Do you recall what Jesus said? Don't hound that lady. Don't harass her. What he has done. Wherever the message of the gospel is preached. He shall be remembered. 
Oh, Ghana, I love Ghana. God bless our homeland, Ghana. And make our nation great and strong. Bold to defend the cost of freedom and of rights. Fill our hearts with what? Oh, your national anthem. <laughs> Hallelujah. The church, that is what God said about the church. In the 30s, and it was revealed. Let me read. He said, note, quote, this aspect of the covenant was were confirmed in 1940 during the Easter convention at Winneba and reconfirmed in 1948 at the general convention at Koforidia. So these things are not of recent though. They were said about the church. So please, take heart. God has said certain things about you and they'll come to pass. Yours is to be committed and stay in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that is God's part. A covenant involves between two people. That is God's side. What about the church's part? Let me quickly go through one that the church will know. 1940. And reconfirmed in 1948. That the church will know and understand his ways and obey his voice and commandments. And that the church, the church would keep itself holy, blameless, and pure. I think uh, Olivia, you can come in now. Ediano. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, Edia Pa, Jesus Christ, Edia No. Every Baba. Oh, oh, oh. Edia Pa. Go ahead. Every Baba. Oh, my heaven, I'm missing. God bless you, Olivia. Two, that a church is not to love and learn the things of the world, nor its ways, for his, that is God's ways, are different from the ways of the world. Therefore, it should not imitate worldliness of any form of religious sects, organization, or churches. For he has chosen the church. Oh, hallelujah. I will continue. I just pause to, to check myself whether you are with me. Therefore, he should not imitate the awareness of any form of religious sects, organizations, or churches. For he has chosen the church to be holy, righteous, faithful, humble, and obedient. It should be a different model and a peculiar people. Tell somebody that I am strange, oh. Sometimes I don't even trust myself. I don't know. I was set up to, to be going here. And then I mean, time changes. And then I will, I will pass here. One time I was driving from Cape Coast to Accra. Kabi a be dimenim. Kai unko. E kwa dimenim so kai unko. Me yase me inwa na kabi aba. Namba be shaho. When I make any attempt and then come, ah, why? 
made the last attempt to overtake. But before let me say this, I heard a voice. Slow down. Slow down. Oh. No. The rest, you know it. Hmm. Ah. Oh, can they sutter? I made the last attempt. Ah! Now, can be a unity. Cool. I'm a swerve. Let me show you them. Then I was hanging like this. Then I was quiet in the car. Because it's just like during the construction, they have heaped and heaped and heaped. So the road is elevated. So down there, could show you them. And every vehicle that gets their stops, then they look down. What prayer? Then I unlock it and I push it. I climbed up. And I stopped there. Within some minutes, some trotter came and pulled me out. I sparked the car. Room. Then, within some minutes, I was driving back. I'm the whole local sabandelele sakaya. Hey, les alababo lo sotoku. Some people have died because of you. Some people are in the grave because of you. Why? Because you are a peculiar person. Oh. And so pastor said in the first service, when you are working for somebody, it's not that you are removing him so that you can get, you can't get there. It doesn't belong to you. Pray for the person. Oh. I am ready. I don't understand myself. And people don't understand me. And you will never understand me. It's just like Jesus. They moved out, going to buy some food. They came and then he was talking to a woman. A woman. A Jew talking to a woman. Ah! A Jew. Oh, Massa, eat something. Oh, she know. And the disciples were inquiring, what might have happened? I think President is telling me that my time is up. I've got it already. Oh, no, no, that's a different mission. How on earth was he talking to a woman? They don't understand you. Let's go here. He said, We are going here. Master, have you forgotten that they are planning to kill you there? Are we going back? Ah, Strange. And so, sister, if you are working with somebody and you don't seem to understand him, yours is to do God's will and leave the rest. Do your will. You may not understand him or her. You may not. Because your ways are not God's ways. Hallelujah. Three, that the church should not be covetous, money minded, selfish, proud, arrogant, and stubborn in its ways. Initially, the Church of Pentecost, you don't allow any. Any pastor to use our pulpit. We were then students at Legon. Oh, I'm here to know. Because of what God has told your church. Because of what God told you. Let everybody blast you and misunderstand you. As long as you are following the will of God, let them take their concerns. Let them. Their ways are not your ways. That the church should not owe any man, borrow or seek financial aids, loans or grants from anywhere, because God is his eternal riches, treasury, and that he is able to sustain the church in all its needs. 
When I talk about some of these things, I put myself there. I will not go and borrow. Oh, and you know what? So, yeah, oh, yeah, I call Jack. Do you know where I come from? Do you know how I've struggled up to this place? And do you know where God wants to lead me that I should spoil myself with these fleeting pleasures? I quite remember when I came from my second master's in, in New York, Apostle F.E.N.G. He said, Apostle went to one of the apostles, called me, and that was the era of Anas. Ada! He spoke in tree, so let me speak. Where they miss every soul, and I miss every soul. A month on Sunday, me, me miss all their own car. Now, so my mimi, sir. And I gave him a response, and the apostle burst out in tongues. Look, I'm Mazuli, Mama Sutaya. I told the apostle, apostle, don't worry me. And I also said in tree, you are young ones, you may not understand this proverb. Say, your pie. Baire, Afasia, na pra, no idea. What's the meaning? What's the meaning? Eh? So, mommy? Uh huh, you know, part. Pastor, uh, Apostle, I'm sorry. I, will, I know where I'm coming from. I will not bring disgrace to my God. Hallelujah. That in order to have a pure, disciplined, holy church, which can stand the test of time, holiness shall become its watchword throughout its entire life. Holiness. What do you mean of holiness? Separatedness. So pray to yourself, oh, you're holy. And mind you, before I joined the Church of Pentecost, oh, these people, I said, well, I've told you, yeah. During the 1933 famine, I saw some Church of Pentecost people, and I saw them, and they were holy. And then they said, come. So me, this church, no girlfriend, no drinks, no discotheque, no video. If you ask a number and I wept and wept and wept and wept, me and Koso Beko, me and Koso Beko. I did not go. The night I couldn't sleep. The following day I took my Bible, and the rest is what I'm standing here. The church then, and it's still then here today, was holy and is holy. They were separate. They don't involve themselves in so many things. We speak of authority. We don't argue. When we speak, it's fine now. We don't involve ourselves in so many things. We don't argue. But when we speak, it's the word of God. And who challenges the word of God? So don't get yourself involved in so many things. Because you are a child of God. You are unique and you are pe peculiar. You are holy. Hallelujah. That a church should not owe any man borrow or seek financial aid, loans or grants from anywhere as God is his eternal riches, treasury, and that he is able to sustain the church in all his needs. Says that the gifts that God will be given by God, no, the gift that will be given by God must be controlled. Some young people are not comfortable here. My own nephew. Because of the eyes, they did some tests at the European hospitals at that time. So he couldn't finish his basic education. Pentecost, Pentecost is no now. The last time I heard of him, uncle, Mija Pentecost. What? Oh my. We have Funtiana. She was gifted. Now, thank God, he's joined the, uh, some apostolic, the Christ Apostolic Apostolic Church. The gifts. And I told you that I'm coming from a prophetic conference. And one of the things that I've noted here that I will share. That we should not 
be contemptuous of prophecy. Prophetic ministry is still relevant. And it sings with what Apostle Nyamiche said. That if our service, if our worship lacks that Pentecostal power, nobody will join us. Nobody will believe us. That fornicators are welcome. Of course they have to come, but they find it so easy to dine with us. When we dine, they dance. When we sit, they sit. When we worship, they worship. They don't feel comfortable. Arm robbers are comfortable with us. Adulterers are comfortable with us. Thieves are comfortable with us. No! They have to be fished out. I was sharing on Wednesday when we came here. I am praying for the day. And it has happened before. There was an elder who preached and said, yes, I've now preached. Now, let's demonstrate it. And there was somebody there, as if somebody had lifted him and thrown it. Him or her. <laughs> I won't say whether it's he or a woman. I see throw him or her outside. And everybody understood it because we know the topic for which the elder spoke on. When anybody enters here, you should experience the presence of God. When we worship God, you should cry with him that when I live here, I'm going to tell him enough of your shit. I'm going to stay pure for God. Oh, why? I'm sorry. And there are, there are evidence amongst here. I have sought his consent to say this. Who has rejected a bribe of three million dollars? Is he stupid? Is he stupid? Yes, he is stupid. In terms of the world. I don't think when he went, he went home, he told his wife. But whether he told him or not, he's not stupid. Why? Because God said he will supply his needs. It doesn't depend on the $3 million. And you cannot resist until you meet somebody. Who will tell you that man shall not live by bread alone? When my brother is, I'm coming level, coming down. He's in the U.S. and is prepared to come and take me home. And that giving me these conditions. Do you think I'll go against the conditions and stay here when we are going there to live eternally? And you are happy with this? And you are comfortable sitting there? Hallelujah. I will continue. That the church should, not rem the church should remember not to have sins. Evil deeds. And the evil people among his membership by rebuke, discipline, and restore backsliders in the spirit of love, compassion, and patience. For if the church would hearken to his voice and obey his precepts, it would be blessed among its peers. End of quote. I have finished. Whoever has ears, let me heed to these words, which are the foundation of this great church. You will see the slides that will be shown here. I believe some of you, you have, not, you have never thought that, oh, as soon as somebody suggested here, I feel it's not a song. It's not there. Here. May you be upstanding. At the appropriate time, I will share my word. This one is <laughs> the reminiscence of the area prophetic conference. Lift up your two hands. Lift them up. Lift them up. Oh, lift them up. And I will not tell you to pray. You think that you are sufficient. And one thing that came there is compl complacency. 
And when we met here on Friday, it came here too by a word of prophecy. We too seem to be too complacent. I'm married with a wife with a good pay. I bought land, I have securities, I have investment. And so you think that is enough. That is not enough for you. Lift up your two hands and pray. To the extent that when we are in the presence of God, you find it so comfortable fidgeting with your phone. And the phone is not even searching scriptures. You are chatting on the phone. You have not met him. If you have met him, Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I will ask the father of the Argon presiding elder, who is a colleague of mine when we were in the Noah's Ark, very good friend of mine, to come and pray. Elder Mark Fusu Ampedu. Ever in thy word abide, ever in thy woes reside. Ever in thy word abide, ever in thy word. Jesus, let me ever be firmly grounded upon thee. Ever in thy word abide. Heavenly King, we want to bless you for your word this morning. We thank you for reminding us where we started, where we are, and where we are going. Thank you for your church. Father, if it has not been your church, some of us might be wallowing in sin and doing whatever is not pleasing in thy sight. Once again, we come before you we accept our mistakes and yield unto you. Thank you, God, that Lord, your word is true. And whatever you've said about this church will be manifested. Father, we bless you and we adore you. We pray that if there's anybody here who is not walking and right with you, Father, by the Spirit of God, draw that person nearer. Let us see your power and your hand in our lives. Let us know that, Lord, you have sanctified us. And, Father, you are sending us to heaven. Don't let us play with our Christian life. Let us know that, Lord, you are coming soon. And we need to model our life like the prophecy that has been given. Father, we bless you and we adore you. We pray that, Lord, you will leave this church ahead and that Lord we will see you use everybody in this church to manifest your glory we bless you for your servants thank you the way he availed himself for you to use him we pray that Lord our lives will be living examples wherever we go that they will say and give glory unto your wonderful name we pray that Lord we will not be filled with pride but day in and day out Father, let us walk with thee. Let us learn from you. And let us know that, Lord, you are our Savior. We thank you and we bless you. We worship you and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.